Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com slash wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hello everyone, Joe Fernandez here, and I'll be going over Step 2 of 3 Steps to Gladiator as an Unholy Death Knight. Step 2 involves preparing for PvP, which includes how to min-max your damage and making the most of your crowd control. It's important to know your normal rotation alongside with your burst rotation so you can deal maximum damage both passively and when going for kills. Your normal rotation will look something like this. Number 1. Keep your target slowed with Chains of Ice. Number 2. Keep Virulent Plague on your target with Outbreak. Number 3. Use Death Quill at 80 plus Runic Power or with Sudden Doom procs. Number 4. Use Necrotic Strike if you have Festering Runes on your target. Number 5. Use Death and Decay if two targets will be hit. And number 6, build Festering Roots with Festering Strike. As for your burst rotation, this will look like this. Number 1, Chains of Ice. Number 2, Outbreak. Number 3, Raise Abomination. Number 4, Dark Transformation. Number 5, Unholy Frenzy. Number 6, Spam Necrotic Strikes. Number 7, Soul Reaper when you run out of runes. Number 8, Continue to Spam Necrotic Strikes. And number 9, Apocalypse with 4 plus Festering Runes if your target is low. Note that with your burst cooldowns, being Raised Abomination, Unholy Frenzy and Apocalypse, you can spread them out more if you see the enemy target use a defensive cooldown and feel that your other offensive cooldowns will not warrant more defensive cooldowns to be used. For example, against a Destruction Warlock, if he uses his Unending Resolve and is very high on HP with full Druid Hearts, it could be smart to save other offensive cooldowns after it wears off so you can deal stronger burst damage later on. Now, when it comes to your crowd control, you want to make use of all your abilities for offensive or defensive purposes, depending on your team's win conditions. The crowd control abilities you have as an Unholy are Death Grip, Asphyxiate, Chains of Ice, Pet Stun, and Dark Simulacrum. Death Grip can be a great way to stop casts and force enemies into your melee range, which has multiple uses of it. One use is to use it offensively against mages to grip targets back to you. This will be great after they blink away and can be an excellent way in stopping Shimmer Polymorph or Ring of Frost combinations from happening against your healer. It can also be used offensively in order to peel enemy melee away from your partners. Usually this will be best when they are connecting during stun lockouts or when they are activate big offensive cooldowns and are trying to slay your partners. This way you can grip them to you, either peeling them completely or forcing them to use additional mobility cooldowns to reconnect, making them vulnerable to being kited. Another time you can use this is to stop enemy priests from running on top of your healer and fearing them. This will either prevent or delay their use of fear, buying your healer extra time to get heals off or use defensive cooldowns if needed. Death Grip is also excellent for stopping important big damaging casts such as Chaos Bolt, which can be used when you have no interrupts available. It will always interrupt the cast and can be used in between your other casts if your goal is to lock down the caster. Last but not least, this is widely popular to use with Windwalker Death Knight. Simply using Death Grip on a target away from you into melee range of you and the Windwalker then leg sweeping them both can generate a lot of cleave pressure and momentum for your team. You can do this aggressively on enemy healers looking to pressure them or even on other DPS targets, commonly in wizard cleaves, in order to reduce their pressure and win in dampening. You can also do this with other stuns on your team 
and used offensively in order to swap to healers and heavily pressure them if your composition requires that. We can see here a Shadow Cleave wants to get aggressive on enemy healers, so they opt for a Death Grip into a Hammer of Justice and followed by more CC, they nearly take down Mimpoike. Asphyxiate will be used like any other stun, mainly used to hit your kill target or burst them down in order to force cooldowns or grab kills. You can also use it on enemy healers as part of a crowd control chain in order to kill them or kill another DPS for the same goal. On the flip side, Asphyxia can be used defensively to peel. You can use it on big damaging cooldowns to negate the target from bursting with these big cooldowns or can stop high damaging abilities like Fists of Fury for instance from being fully channeled if taking a lot of damage. The variance in defensive or offensive use of this spell will come down to the composition you play and how you beat the enemy team with said composition. So be wary of how you win, which can dictate how you use this ability most of the game. Now, Chains of Ice isn't like any other slow, as it is much more powerful than most other snares, reducing your movement speed by a massive 70% instead of the standard 50% whilst being a rage spell and not being dispellable. This is hugely advantageous against most enemies as you can simply snare them with a stronger snare that they can dish out, allowing you to either keep up to your targets or be able to kite them, especially against enemy melee players. So keep them up on enemy players, especially melee, so you can easily kite them and make their gameplay frustrating. You can also keep it on most healers so that they can't roam around freely looking for crowd control. For example, against priest teams, they may attempt to run out for a fear on your healer, so keeping them in a chains of ice will make this much more difficult to pull off depending on the distance they have to run. On classes like Fury Warriors or Wrestle Druids that can deal with chains of ice more easily, it can still be worth to keep up on them if you can avoid being bloodthirst or to slow down the druid and stop them from spam shapeshifting. It won't be good to do it all the time, but can be nice in certain situations where you want to disrupt their gameplay. It's important to keep multiple targets snared in 3v3 just to make sure that they will be easier to kite and catch up to, which is beneficial for everyone in your team. For instance, if a rogue is tunneling your rest of druid, keeping chains of ice on the rogue will allow them to easily kite the rogue most of the time. So keep up Chains of Ice often in order to have more control of the game in terms of target choice and survivability. So your pet stun is going to be used pretty much the same way as Asphyxiate, but used when you don't have Asphyxiate active. This is so you will have access to a stun during an arena match more often, allow you to do more offensive setups or have defensive peels if needed. Pet position will be important as it will be harder to get your pet stun off if your pet is in crowd control or too far from your enemy target. A common example is if it's rooted too far away from your target, unable to get the pet sun off even though it's highlighted. It's important you pay attention to where your pet is and get used to its range so you can land your pet stuns more reliably. Another common mistake to watch out for as an unholy death knight is during your pet transformation. As you know, you can utilize an extra kick whilst your pet is transformed, however, if this falls off, then you won't be able to use the interrupt on it. So keeping an eye out for your pet transformation as it may fall off which means your pet kick will no longer be available. Dark Simulacrum isn't a crowd control ability itself, but it will become one if you copy main crowd control. This can easily be done with certain spells such as Polymorph, Fear and Cyclones. Simply using it when those casts are just about to end, you can then use it yourself instantly. Usually you will want to reverse it on the enemy healer in order to create solid counter pressure and chain off the crowd control yourself with a stun afterwards. When more confident in your ability to time Dark Sim well, you can start using it on an instant crowd control such as Hammer of Justice. Simply using it when you know their next global will be Hammer of Justice means you can copy it and then use it once again aggressively on your enemy healer if needed. Note that you can't steal Hex with Dark Sim Ulochrome because it doesn't cost mana and Dark Sim only steals mana costing spells. So that's it with step 2 of 3 steps to Gladiator as an Unholy Death Knight. Make sure to plus skill this guide if it helped and feel free to ask any questions or comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.